when you think about Jesus, and by the way, his name wasn't Jesus, it was Yahshua. All right, let's see it. But everyone calls him Jesus. That's not his name. And I'm not afraid to say it. His name was Yahshua. It was not Jesus. Jesus was a made up name. It wasn't translated into Jesus. Otherwise, the other Yahshua's would be Jesus, and they're not. They're Joshua's. Now, we'll get to Jesus in a moment, but I want to talk about why the other Yahshua's are Joshua's instead of Jesus's. And the main reason is because in the Bible, we are translating the Hebrew Bible directly from Hebrew texts. And so we render the names in transliteration. So we're transliterating directly from Hebrew. The New Testament, however, which is where we find Jesus of Nazareth, is written in Greek. And so they've already transliterated the name from Aramaic into Greek. And so when we translate that, most translations just transliterate the Greek name rather than skipping over the source text and reconstructing what we think the Aramaic uh, pronunciation underlying that Greek transliteration was. And as we're going to see, that's more complex than a lot of people think. But uh, let me explain the difference between translation and transliteration. When we translate a word, we look for a word in our own language that refers to or indexes the same concept or idea or principle that is indexed or referred to by a foreign word. When we transliterate, we're not doing that. We're using our own written language to try to uh, sound out the way a foreign word sounds rather than what it means. So a good example is this plate that I bought in Bethlehem. We have Shalom written on the top in Hebrew characters, which is the language in which the word is found. And then here we have S-H-A-L-O-M written in Latin characters. This is not a translation of Shalom. This is a transliteration into Latin characters. So someone who does not speak Hebrew can more or less approximate the sound that that word makes. If I were to translate Shalom, I would write P-E-A-C-E peace. And so in the Bible, we don't generally translate names. We transliterate them so people who don't speak the source language can get close to understanding more or less what they would have sounded like. However, a lot of names have conventional pronunciations and most translations, rather than trying to return to a more careful uh, representation of what they may have originally sounded like, just use the more conventionalized pronunciations of those names. And you can like that or not like that, but that's uh, what most Bible translations these days do. Because Yahshua became Joshua. There wasn't even a J until the 1500s. So at the end of the day, his name was not Jesus. His name was Yahshua. You should probably know his name. So there are a few different scholarly reconstructions of how Jesus' name may have been pronounced in Aramaic in first century CE Galilee. And not a single one of them is Yahshua. Because that's just this creator taking the name Joshua because he evidently thinks that is an accurate pronunciation from antiquity and replacing the J with a Y. Uh, but Joshua wasn't pronounced Joshua anciently. It was pronounced Yehoshua. And it is a variant version of the name underlying Jesus. They're not the same name. Yehoshua has an additional hey and an additional vav. Three whole letters from the Tetragrammaton. Uh, Jesus' name in Aramaic was likely pronounced either Yeshu or Yeshu. And I was doing an awful job of trying to represent uh, the guttural ein at the end of the word, which would just be a constriction of the throat at the top, a pharyngeal consonant. And I know that I have a number of folks in the audience who will speak Arabic or Hebrew uh, natively and can do a much better job than I can in representing uh, the ein. But the data don't indicate that the furtive pata we're used to hearing on the end, Yeshua, was pronounced in the first century. That probably wasn't pronounced until centuries later when the ein was no longer pronounced or at least was not easily recognized. There are some scholars who believe that in the first century CE, particularly in Galilee, the ein wouldn't even have been pronounced at all. That's based on some rabbinic literature that may be poking fun at Galileans for not pronouncing their eins, uh, as well as some other indications that in later Hebrew, uh, Galileans were thought not to pronounce their eins. There's also the fact that the Greek transliteration, Jesus, doesn't try to represent uh, an A quality vowel at the end or any indication of the ein. But because it was a guttural, it, it may not need to be represented in Greek transliteration. So we can't know for sure if it was just Yeshu or Yeshu 
with that uh, pharyngeal consonant at the end, but what it definitely wasn't was Yahshua. If you want a deeper dive on this, Andrew over at Religion for Breakfast has had a wonderful video up for the last couple months called What Was the Real Name of Jesus? Goes into a good bit of detail and includes some wonderful commentary from Benjamin Suchard, who is a biblical scholar who specializes in historical linguistics and uh, Hebrew and Aramaic. So I would highly recommend checking that out.